Good day to you, sir. And a very good day to you, Mrs. D. And how do we find you on this fair morning? Exceedingly preoccupied, madam. Was ever thus. You've always been preoccupied. You're too preoccupied for your own good, sir. Nothing comes from nothing, madam. And we have had nothing from you, sir. Evelina, Georgina, come and greet your father. Good day, father. May I present my child to you? Your granddaughter. Rosalie Adelaide. Your only surviving grandchild. Georgina, cease your dithering. May I suggest, Mrs. D, with the utmost respect, that you withdraw to the drawing room? Good day to you, Mrs. Darby. Would you care to step this way? Good day to you, Mr. Turner. And will you be gracing us with your presence in the withdrawing room, sir? Mm -hmm. I sincerely hope you will. And pray do not keep us waiting. We have our own lives to lead. Come along, daughters. The vapours in this room are most noxious to a child's lungs. Hi everybody, I'm Peter Travers and welcome to Popcorn where we tell you what's happening at the movies and there's a happening now that if you haven't seen it yet you've got to get out there and do it. It's called Mr. Turner. It is directed by Mike Lee and it stars Timothy Spall, one of my personal favorite actors in the world. I mean this is the guy who doesn't do any wrong as far as I'm concerned. His wife may have different opinions about this. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't really know, oh, but yeah. for me. <laughs> So uh, playing J.M.W. Turner, one of the great British artists, he's already won the Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival, the New York Film Critics Award, the National Society of Film Critics Awards. He's probably got them in a huge bag, do you, Tim? You got a, where are they? Well, they're actually on a windowsill in my flat. At, okay. Yeah, which is really nice because it was decidedly empty. <laughs> <laughs> empty before. There were just small certificates <laughs> were mentioned in dispatches and a lot of other <laughs> things. Like, this one, I seem to be getting the flowers rather than the letters of uh, dismissal. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they are. Yeah, yeah. No, there's no middle ground. Yeah, nearly. It's just no. you know, I didn't get, I'm, not get, I'm getting them this time, which, all is, which is very, very delightful and constantly surprising. Is it because sometimes you get all of this praise? I mean, it's one of those performances that everyone who sees Mr. Turner says, mm. this is great. And mm. the idea is, what do, you, what do you do? How do you take that into your head after that? Saying, I'm great, yes. Well, that would be a good thing. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, you know, it, this sort of thing is the sort of thing that c could turn a young girl's head. Mm -hmm. But because I'm an old fart, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> but that doesn't mean inside that old flatulent uh, gentleman is the head that could be turned. But, uh, but no, uh, look, what it is, is deli it's delightful. Because when you work with Mike Lee, the, f the process is so intense that you work from, gr you build up a character from zero, from ground zero, and you work at it from the inside out. So you build this character organically and you base it on stuff that you're reading about it and you mix them together and hopefully you come up with this organic character. So what happens is that because you're so inside the character, it's very difficult to get an objective view of what you're actually doing. But until, you, until it goes out there and you present it literally to an audience like it's a baby mm -hmm. um, that you've created, you have no idea what kind of people are going to make it. Are they going to go, oh, what a beautiful baby? Or they're going to say, can you please just raise the cover over that child? <laughs> So it's, That's an ugly baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It yeah. feels a bit like that. You just like you are. You feel like you are the baby that you've given birth to, and you're waiting for, for comments. So it, it's a, it's a real constant delight. For how many years from the first time Mike said, "I want you to play Mr. Turner," well, to it being on the screen? He first asked me seven years ago, yeah. and then four and a half years ago, I phoned him up because I was sitting outside Turner's where Turner was born in Covent Garden mm -hmm. in, in the centre of London, and he said, come in. Remember, I was telling you about Turner. Well, that's going to be my next film. I said, I presume you're talking about JMW, not Tina. He said, I can sing, but I haven't got the legs. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. There's all kinds of things. You know, Preparation. Maybe you don't, maybe you don't <laughs> want to have that, have that image in your mind. <laughs> but, um, and then um, he said, yeah, would you go off and learn how to paint? But, I mean, that really... It's a bit like saying, here's advanced Sudoku, come back and play Einstein. <laughs> you know, that was about assimilating and getting yourself knowledgeable, not only about how the guy worked, 
and what it is to hold a brush, what it is like. This guy, JMW Turner, it turns out, was painting and drawing, really, almost bef before he could read and write, and almost before he could walk and tod toddling about, he was drawing, you know. So he was a God-given genius. And what you were saying about learning, at least the mm. technique, there's a scene where he's at the Royal Academy, yeah. where they have, I guess, a day where before yeah. it's shown to the world. And he comes in, he seems to be spitting on yeah, the yeah. canvas. It's called varnishing, funnily yeah. known as varnishing See? days, which was originally to finish your paintings, to put the varnish mm -hmm. on. Uh, just, but, but what they were allowed to do was finish their paintings in situ in the Academy. And this was when Turner, often a non-communicative man, was at his most mischievous and at his most maverick, and he would come in, and sometimes he would send in a painting that looked just barely finished, and he would just, I called him Turner Scissorhands at one point, <laughs> because he just was able to create this amazing thing out of nothing. What was the painting of Turner's that spoke to you? And it's the one I actually copied. Um, uh, as an exercise just before we started, and that is, that's uh, ste a snowstorm steamboat of a harbour's mouth, which is the one that he was, at the, in his 60s, mm -hmm. he had himself strapped to the top of this mask in a false 10 storm off of the coast of Britain. And you look at this painting and there's a terror, and there's an odd dreamlike um, calmness in the middle of it. And he's got this amazing mixture of the two, there's a ferocious beauty in it. It's unsettling. It makes you feel ill and fascinated at the same time. And, and to me, that is one of his masterpieces because it explains what is going on inside him, mm -hmm. how it's assimilated, synthesized through his intellect and through his life, and how it comes out as a masterful piece of technical as well as expressive painting. I'm concentrating on this role because it's so extraordinary mm. in that, but you've had an extraordinary career yeah. yourself. Now people, if school children would come up to you on the street and say, you're a worm tail. From yeah, you're Peter yeah. Pettigrew from Harry Potter. Yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which not is, only kids. Not only not kids. kids. Just, well, no, I was, I was doing a film and we filmed it in, in New Mexico and I got in this lift in, this, uh, in Santa Fe and two very sophisticated middle-aged people got in the lift uh, um, uh, and they were going down to dinner and a lady looked around and looked at me and nudged her husband and he looked and he said, oh my God, are you the rat dude from Harry Potter? <laughs> <laughs> I said, yes, I do answer to that appellation. <laughs> so it, it's a very, very odd, you know. Um, so it's funny how you get, you know, um, well, you've played yeah, a lot of yeah. different characters. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you've done that. I'm talking, I mean, Enchanted is another movie mm. where you're reaching mm. children, kids yeah, who yeah, see you yeah. in that and can't get you yeah. out of their heads. Yeah. And then in the theater, you've done a lot of things. And for yeah. Mike, there's yeah. a movie of Mike's that I thought never caught a break called All or Nothing. Oh, yeah. That yeah, I think yeah. people yeah. should see yeah. the whole movie. I mean, yeah. I think you're terrific in it, oh, but I think you. this is yeah. a movie people should watch. But you played Winston Churchill in, yeah. in King's yeah. Speech, which is a cameo, really. Yeah, yeah it movie. is, yeah. I hear you, Tim, I hear you talk about mm. acting with such passion, mm. you know. It, it still matters to you so yeah. much. But I also remember that time when Secret and Lies came out, yeah. Secrets and Lies, where you got a diagnosis that you had yeah. how many Weeks was it that they told you you could live? Well, I, I was told, I was told um, I was going to go to the Cannes Film Festival mm -hmm. with Secrets and Lies, and I felt a bit ill. I thought I'd go to the doctors, and uh, he phoned me up a couple of hours later and told me I had leukemia. You know, and I said, "Well, I can't have leukemia. I'm going to Cannes." He said, <laughs> yeah. "No, you're not, mate. You're going to hospital." <laughs> and when I got there. Um, and they did all the tests. So luckily, uh, I'm the living proof. Uh, I got better. I had the audacity not to die. Um, but what are you uh, feeling when you, you know, suddenly Secrets and Lies, one of the great yeah. Mike Lee movies and, and yeah. another extraordinary performance from you. Yeah. And they're saying, not only are you not going to really act anymore. Yeah. You're not going to be here anymore. Yeah. Well, there's nothing like a, there's nothing like a, a, a dose of having a pig over the precipice to put, <laughs> make you put things that, in order, you know? And it did turn out that I was in the very late stages of this particular strain of leukemia I had. Uh, I got on top of it. The, the, I was actually 
sitting, lying in my bed with a pipe in my heart, having my first chemotherapy, as Brenda Bleth in Mike Lee and Marianne Jean Baptiste were walking down the red carpet. But and I said to my nurse, oh, look, I should be there. She said, oh, yes, of course you should, like I was a maniac. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I said, never mind, I didn't, uh, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't push the, the thing. Um, well, you did something extraordinary mm, after that, yeah. though. You, and it was a, a TV show in Britain where you, went, you got a barge. You yeah. and your wife yeah. took off. That's right, we did, yeah. yeah. On a barge. Yeah, a seagoing barge. What was the yeah. name of that series? It was called Somewhere at Sea. Somewhere at Sea, yeah. Yeah, and we never planned that. I, I was just doing these voiceovers with this guy for a, ch a documentary series he made. He said, I'd like to... F and I'd come back and I'd tell him we were taking this barge around Britain, around by sea. Yeah. And he said, I'd like to film that. And I said, no, nah, there's no way you're going to do that. This is our private life. And I told my wife that this nutter had said he wants to film. And she said, oh, oh, that sounds like a good idea. Anyway, cut a long story short, he came with just him, no backup boats. And I didn't know anything about the sea. I taught myself on the job. And the thing about the British Isles is it is it's a beautiful place, but it sits in the middle of the North Sea, which is yeah. one of the most <laughs> roughest seas you can go on, you know? Uh, and there was a few times when it got pretty nasty. Well, look, I see there, t I could talk to you forever. Oh, it's a and great And it's just system. so much fun to do it. But you did talk about bravery. So this mm. show always ends. This is the first time you've been on. Mm. It always ends in song. Right. It does. Well, it does. Does it? There's well, a little bit of that now. Of course, it. in Topsy Turvy, you were the Mikado. You yeah. played that. Then in Lucky Break at the end singing Sunny, so you can't tell me you don't sing. And you were Beatle Brantford and Tim Burton Sweeney Todd. That's right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Just warbling to Alan Rickman about ladies in their senses. Yeah, a horrible little song, song. About, a horrible little song about how to seduce a 17 year, year old girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a sweet one. Yeah, but I just want you to just do a little bit of some song that means something to you. Right. Maybe it means something to you and your wife. All right, uh, right. This is going to probably be an total embarrassment. But here we go. I hope so. Um, yeah, let's hope. Yeah, it's yeah that's what we want. Or a sentimental, ass cringing <laughs> moment. Also huh? great. Great. Yeah, yeah. Right. Here we go. In my solitude, you haunt me with memories of days gone by. I sit in my chair, I'm filled with despair. No one can be so sad. I sit and I stare, there's gloom everywhere. I know that I'll soon go mad in my solitude. You hold me. That's enough. That's beautiful. Uh, Tim, oh, thank you. Thank you so, <laughs> Peter, so much. It's been a pleasure to meet you. That was great, and it came from the heart, it was uh, all there. Uh.